Christmas Inc. by Liam Hogan. Danny always hated this time of year. Robins he could just about put up with despite how silly they look come spring. But candy canes, Christmas trees, Santa's smug face complete with a triplet of brightly coloured hose. He sighed as he laid the tattooed gun down. Just the holly berries to ink and he was done, thank God. The smell of gin permeating her skin was getting to him. He supposed he ought to be grateful. So many people were getting tattoos these days. The business was better than it ever had been. But the lack of thought people put into it, the tattoo on the wind, and of the most banal images, especially come December. He wondered if, when they succumbed to their mawkish sentimentality, they stopped to think what that snowman was going to look like lying on the beach six months from now. Tattoos were for life, not just for Christmas. <laughs> he glanced down at the chain of skulls encircling his arm, even though the shop's small heater could barely compete with these cold wintry months. He liked to work short-sleeved to show off the wares. Memento Mori. Now there was a proper reason for getting inked. Skulls. Angels of death. Black roses with thorns dripping blood. A permanent reminder of your mortality. A piece of inked flesh that will go with you to your grave. Nowadays you didn't need an excuse. As soon as you were old enough, down to the parlour you would go. Sometimes with the parents in tow. Where was the rebellion in that? Where was the stigma that set you apart from others even when the artwork was discreetly hidden away? Now it seemed you needed a tattoo to fit in. A tattoo on the wrist or the ankle where it was always on show. And a what? A star. A butterfly. A cursive YOLO. <laughs> Tattoos purely for the sake of getting a tattoo. With age verification a legal requirement, it ought to be a sign of maturity, a mark of adulthood. If only people didn't ask for such stupid, childish images. <laughs> Cartoon figures, superhero logos, even Father Christmas himself. He felt like asking, why? Felt like asking, didn't you stop believing in that fat fraud ten years ago? Danny dabbed the last of the blood and ink from the holly and mistletoe wreath. And, after the girl had admired it in a handheld mirror, he took a Polaroid for the records before covering the inked area with a gauze held in place by surgical tape. The girl fidgeted as he gave the aftercare instructions he doubted anyone ever listened to anymore, and only when he was done did she finally pull up her knickers. Almost <laughs> as if she'd been trying to give him every last opportunity. I want to be kissed under the mistletoe, mm. she told him with a smile when she entered the darkened shop. It might have been funny if it wasn't the third one he'd done that week. <laughs> or between the belly button and the pubis. At least this girl wasn't as fat as the other two. <laughs> or as shaved. It wasn't that shaved reminded him of a freshly plucked chicken. That always did. But the girls who shaved down below thought that was the exposed area was fair game for his armour. He had to warn them of potential light scrubbing, raised sensitive skin, and the fact that they shouldn't be going anywhere near it with a razor for at least two months. He blamed the footballers, the pop stars and celebrity wannabes as well, but mainly the footballers. 
fact was, even here, tattoo artists heading towards the big 5-0 had less ink on him than the average footballer seemed to collect for getting out of their 20s. He wondered when they found the time. And did they have to get them done in the off-season so the healing skin didn't interfere with their training? Was it Beckham who started? Each fresh piece of ink captured by the waiting press, scrutinised, analysed for its non-existent meaningful insight and then swiftly copied by his most armed fans. He looked at his watch as the doorbell tinkled Mistletoe Girl's exit, answering her cheery festive farewell with a grim nod. Four o'clock time to close up shop, and maybe not open up again until the new year. Takings be damned. His gaze rested on the open bottle of white wine on the counter, the label unfamiliar, something cheap. The girl must have left it behind. Presumably wine is what you graduate to after an afternoon on the gin, or was gin yesterday's drink? the distinctive aromatics lingering long after the effects of the alcohol. He'd been aware that she got a bottle with her when she'd entered. She'd offered it to him, but he'd insisted, no drinking on the premises. She pouted. He remained stony-faced. And then she smiled. Back in second. He'd assumed she'd been downing what was left, wringing the last bit of Dutch courage from the fermented grain. That or handing it to her two mates who'd been lurking outside and who had turned to go as she headed back in. But it was still half full. He guessed that she and her friends had only had a quick swig instead. Time was he'd have joined her in a drink even before he started work. If it was a full bottle. It'd pretty much be empty by the end, and then they'd screw. But he hadn't screwed a customer since... Ah. He remembered the tattoos, including the rose he added to her collection, but not her name. He must be getting old. And he hadn't had a drink while working for... for what? Five years? He'd had a few complaints, had a nasty visit from the health and safety. But it was better for all of that. Better for him. Better for his customers. Even if, along with the plastic gloves, the disposable needles and consent forms, it was all rather sterile. He laughed. Of course it was sterile. Though not in the way his tired brain had at first meant. He was drawn once again to the wine bottle. No doubt. Nasty stuff. And warm now, too. Although warm was a, a relative term. But it was only half a bottle. Something to get him started whilst he closed up. And after all, it was Christmas Eve. He came to. His tongue thick and furred. His cheek pressed against a hard, cold surface. <coughs> a floor. A tiled floor. His tiled floor. He was in the shop. The main lights off. Just his workstation lamp to see by. He tried to push himself up, but his head howled in protest, his arms sliding from under him, and his forehead clunked back to the tiles. He didn't need to get up yet, did he? Give it some time. He, he slowly opened his eyes again, saw the wine bottle too, too close to focus on, still with a pool of piss-yellow liquid at its overturned base. The demon drink. But... He hadn't even finished it. He groaned. It must have been spiked. Probably ketamine. 
he'd taken that before, recreationally, and the fuzzy hole of his memory and the blurry return to consciousness were all too familiar. But then, wouldn't the girl have been in a similar state? She'd been merry, sure, full of Christmas cheer, but not, not falling over paralytic. Unless, unless she was the one who'd done the spiking. He scrabbled to his feet, lurched over to the door. The sign said, closed, but he wasn't locked. Groaned again, turned to the cash register, which was open. Open and empty. He'd been rolled by the mistletoe. So much for her merry bloody Christmas. She must have been just waiting, hoping he'd drink her spiked wine. Her and the couple of guys that had been hanging around. And like a sucker, like a complete and utter twat, he had. But as the feeling was restored to his body, it wasn't the ransacked till that worried him the most. It was the, it was the tightness on his on his left side, sore and tender. That and the discarded tattoo gun on the floor. He pulled up his shirt, fearing the worst. Fuckers! Unbelievable fucking fuckers! His favorite tattoo. The skull with eyes of flame that spanned five of his ribs. Ruined by a Hitler moustache and a cack-handed attempt at the outline of a Santa hat. <laughs> he slumped into his chair. Losing a week's takings was bad enough, but this... He carefully ran a sterile wipe over the punctured flesh, trying to work out how deep they'd needled. If he was lucky, he would slough off with his dead skin. But he had a feeling this wasn't his lucky day. Anger seethed up. There had been a time when these punks wouldn't have dared mess with him, when he could quell or start a fight with just a look, when youth and the amount of ink on display had combined to make him a scary son of a bitch. But he knew he'd mellowed over the years. But to find that he got so obviously soft as to become a victim, gritted his teeth. He should report the theft, report the botched inking, take his punishment meekly and let the authorities dole out a few slaps on the wrist, assuming they ever identified the culprits. Well, screw that. He'd get his revenge and it would be bloody. He'd make them pay for messing with him. First, though, there was something he had to do. He'd inked himself before, of course, every tattooist did. Usually only a small pieces in easy to reach areas, but he was damned if he was going to let some other artist fix what Mistletoe Girl and her friends had done. He'd be the laughing stock of the community, a community not known for its tolerance of fucked up tattoos. They gave the industry a bad name. He rigged up the mirrors so he could see his side. The hit the tash was the first to go. Streaks of white gave it a more natural salt and pepper look, and extending it to the sides quickly removed the distinctive blocky shape. If a skull with a handlebar moustache was a little unusual, so what? <laughs> Moustaches were it, weren't they? That and stupidly big beards on wankers who, if they had any self-respect, would be riding Harleys, not bloody Bromptons. As for the outline of the hat, well, flames, that would work, Danny thought. Covered a multitude of sins, flames. A lot of it might, but you don't have to be too precise. Unfortunately, there was space enough to accommodate them. Christ, though, it was painful. Whether it was because he was stretching to reach or or simply because he was doing it to himself and so unable to tune it out. But shit, it got so bad, he almost reached for the dregs 
of the wine. Before you remember what else the bottle contained. It was past midnight before he was done. His side stinging like a bastard and his fingers cramped with tension. He doubted he'd do anything over the holiday period except seethe and plot revenge. But even so, he was pretty happy with his work. Sure, it wasn't perfect, but it was good enough never to guess it hadn't been planned all along. Even if he'd have to grow his own facial hair to match the now bewhiskered skull. <laughs> And maybe it was time to reinvent himself anyway. He'd make other changes. He'd stop doing anything he didn't fully believe in. No more cute kittens, stupid mottos, or bloody unicorns. <laughs> if he couldn't convince them to get something real, he'd send them to one of the other parlours that kept springing up. Change his window display. Change his name. He'd always wanted to be a dame. And after all, what was stopping him? He'd make something good out of this festive disaster. It was only as he was unclipping the mirrors from the stand and one tilted upwards that he saw something written colourfully across his forehead. <laughs> Oh, he muttered, reading what the mirror showed, his face crumbling in despair as he translated it the right way round. Un-fucking-believable. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, fucking ho. Ha <laughs> ha!